By now, most of us have heard about the elusive planet Nibiru. It is a subject that grasps the imagination of the wandering mind as we gaze at a cosmos that appears too big to comprehend. But when we learn of this planet, it sometimes comes in the form of misinformation. And when the information presented as evidence of another planet orbiting the sun is easily debunked, then sometimes that is enough to dismiss the existence of Nibiru. And this can be frustrating because the actual evidence of a massive yet unknown planet orbiting the sun is very real. In modern times, we have never directly observed this, but the search for a planet X has been on for centuries. The evidence is overwhelming that it exists. In fact, it is impossible for it not to exist. We will tell you why we believe this planet exists and you guys can come to your own conclusion. Wait till you hear this. So we start with the Sumerians. This civilization is dated to 5,000 years old, though we are very skeptical about this dating process of the timeline of historical accuracies. But let's say the ancient Sumerians did in fact live 5,000 years ago. This civilization were masters of everything. Almost every discipline they turned their attention to turned out to be the foundation for modern society today. They appear to have a higher understanding than we have today of many things, including astronomy. They depict the wandering, crossing planet Nibiru in many details, and they even describe in cuneiform text of the beings that live on the planet and who visited the Earth. Their planet's atmosphere was failing, but they knew how to fix the problem by filtering gold particles into the atmosphere. This could be either a temporary or long-term fix to protect them from space radiation and harmful rays from the sun. So they came to the Earth. They were worshipped here as gods by the Sumerians. The Anunnaki mined the Earth for gold and returned to Nibiru, apparently exchanging vast knowledge and understanding with the Sumerians in exchange for the gold. Very famous depictions carved in rock show these extraterrestrial beings descending to the Earth in flying machines. It can't really be denied that this event took place. The fact they were depicting not only Nibiru, but also Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto, all of which were only discovered in modern times. Yet, these guys knew of this right at the start of the human journey. How could that be, you have to wonder? The timeline of our history is obviously flawed enormously. Think about this. Uranus discovered in 1781, and then Neptune in 1846, but they were depicted 5,000 years earlier. Since the modern discovery of these gas giants, something strange has been observed by modern astronomers. An unseen object is causing irregularities in their orbits. This actually led to the discovery of Pluto in 1930, but tiny Pluto is nowhere near massive enough to have such an effect on these planets. That means there's another planet that we have yet to observe tugging on Uranus and Neptune. Percival Lowell died trying to find this hidden planet, but between 2014 and 2016, Caltech announced that there must be a planet X cautiously calling this hypothetical. The astronomers stress that there simply cannot be any other explanation when you consider the effects this is having on the two giant planets of our solar system. And we must also consider what the asteroid belt is. How the asteroid belt exists seemed a bit of a mystery. That was until it was suggested that the debris in this area between Mars and Jupiter was once a planet that collided with the Nibiru system. Beginning in 1801, tiny rock and metallic objects were discovered to be orbiting the sun at about this distance. Since then, several hundred thousand large asteroids have been categorized, and it is estimated that there are more than a million large asteroid, Ceres being the largest and categorized as a dwarf planet. Ceres is fascinating. Scientists have yet to determine what the spots on Ceres are. Some suggesting they are lights on the surface, possibly some sort of crystal reflecting light. It is a strange little place. Is there a simple answer for these white areas on the dwarf planet's surface? Among catastrophists, there is a substantial disagreement on the matter of the missing fifth planet from the sun in the place of which lies the Great Band. 
the debris of an enormous planet which the Sumerians knew as Timat. Ancient Sumerian texts indicate that Timat was struck by a large planet which moved it into its present orbit and also created the Earth's moon and the asteroid belt. The planet Nibiru, as it came into the solar system on its clockwise retrograde elliptical course, struck Timat, which was moving in its ordained counterclockwise orbit. According to Sitchin's well-known translation, one of Nibiru's satellites struck Timat first, followed by two more of its moons. Nibiru then itself, an enormous cosmic entity, struck Timat, smashing one half of the planet into pieces, which became what the Sumerians called the Great Band. The remaining half of the planet, which was struck by a smaller moon of Nibiru, and was catapulted into a new orbit, along with a chunk of material which became its moon. According to the Enuma Elish, Timat's original moons were dispersed, many changing the direction of their orbits and rotations creating Earth's moon and the asteroid belt. A Chilean astronomer by the name of Carlos Munoz Ferrara knew of the evidence for a hidden planet. Armed with the knowledge that Nibiru exists, Ferrara was able to predict catastrophic events on Earth with shocking accuracies. He warned that these events would only intensify as the centuries roll on. Carlos Munoz Ferrara predicted with extraordinary accuracy numerous earthquakes in South America during the last century. He did this by making direct correlations between specific astronomical phenomena and various catastrophic earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. His most significant prediction regards the future arrival of a comet planet, Nibiru. Ferrara calls it a comet planet because it has the size of a planet and the speed and elliptical orbit of a comet. Munoz Ferrara explains that this is due to the catastrophic approach of the comet planet, which eventually will pass 14 million kilometers away from Earth, accelerating the great geophysical change, which is already slowly advancing. The Chilean astronomer specified the mass, velocity, orbital time, the trajectory, and the terrible consequences being produced by Nibiru on our solar system. Chile recognized Munoz Farala for his mathematical accuracy in regards to the earthquake that devastated the south of the southernmost country in 1939. The accuracy was to such an extent that Farala even set the date for the earthquake, which was published in the Journal of Conception. He was only wrong by a difference of two hours. The disaster claimed the lives of 60,000 people. He also announced the earthquakes of 1960 and 1985. There will come a time when Nibiru will be permanently visible as a second sun and in common conditions in broad daylight. This appeared to be validated for a short period in the 80s by the orbiting infrared telescope Iris. Carlos did not mention when this planet would next come close to the Earth, only that world events would intensify as the years go by. The closer the planet gets, the more cataclysmic the events. It is far too easy for us to dismiss the existence of Nibiru, but history tells us that it does in fact exist. If you consider that all the mentioned possibilities through the course of history, then you must come to the conclusion that we have a hidden planet in our solar system that we are yet to observe. The ancients knew of this, and there are footprints in our solar system that can't be explained away as anything else other than the influence of a giant ninth planet. What do you guys think of this anyway? Comments below, and thank you for watching. What we have discovered is that numerous features of the Kuiper Belt, a field of icy debris beyond the orbit of Neptune, can be understood if the solar system possesses an additional ninth planet that resides well beyond the orbits of the known planets.